Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be discussing what to do when silver prices are falling rapidly, uh, like they have been the last few days. Um, we'll be getting into a little bit of why that's been going on, uh, so sort of a market update, but more importantly, you know, that's some general things to think through what does impact the price of silver, um, and then also uh, just how to play it smart when things are struggling um, as they are in the past few days. So um, a bit of a you know, update is that silver was in the mid $26 an ounce range. Um, it's since fallen to the high $22 in the span of about a week. Um, and for those wondering why that is, uh, there's sort of two main things going on. So the first is silver and gold are generally safe haven assets. And so because there's been some um, talks that are progressing about fixing the issues with the debt ceiling, um, people view there being less uh, risk um, more generally, and so they're selling something like gold or silver, which is used to hedge against that, or if there's some real um, big problem with the currency, you know, those are going to be much more relatively attractive. Um, and then second is that uh, some of the solid economic data means that we do have potential for either sustained higher interest rates or um, even another interest rate hike or two. Um, and because something like silver, uh, it's not a yielding asset. It's a non-yielding asset. You know, it's not, you're not going to be, um, you know, getting any dividends from holding uh, silver or at least not in most of those forms. You know, this five troy ounces is the same five troy ounces that it was a few years ago when I bought it. You know, then all of a sudden people uh, sell um, their silver, gold, anything that's not yielding as rates um, go up. So uh, it was a really good environment for silver when things were like zero or 1%, um, though it actually never, you know, it's higher now than it was back then. And that's for a whole host of different reasons. But um, the big point is those are two main things that you want to be thinking about in terms of what's going to be impacting those prices. Um, now, more generally, when silver prices uh, fall like they have been recently, um, there's a few things I think it's important to consider. So uh, the first is, you know, I view silver as very much a long term investment. It's not something or, or, you know, just something to stack. It's not something that can be efficiently um, traded in the medium term. And what I mean by that is if you're a short term trader, you know, you go to a coin shop that just bought a silver deal, you have either retail or another wholesaler lined up, uh, and you trade it, you know, in a matter of hours or days, or maybe you have it, you know, sold before you even show up and purchase it, you know, you can do very well like that. And then that's just a volume game. Um, if you hold it in the much longer term, um, because there are if you're especially buying retail, you're probably gonna have to pay a little bit more of a premium uh, and then when you go back to sell it you may not have the connections that a dealer might have so you may have to take more of a haircut so say you're losing five or ten percent on each end of the trade um, that's okay if silver was five bucks an ounce you bought it for 550 then it goes to 50 and you sell it for 46 um, but the medium term you know say you bought 20 ounces and you want it to see a little bit of a movement um, you bought it at 27 an ounce when it was 25 bucks now it's fallen to 22 and if you go sell it maybe you'll get 20 21 dollars an ounce that's not going to be a very good outcome um, and that's sort of in that i don't know three month to a year obviously if something spikes or doubles or triples you know then you can still be okay with those um, sort of selling and getting in and out costs but that's just something that i think is important to consider uh, as you navigate you want to be uh, in it for the long term and understanding your um, cost basis, how you've been navigating that. I do need to make a video soon about how to get low premium silver uh, because I certainly have had a lot of success doing that and have also bought lots of coins uh, when I shouldn't, um, when I could have waited patiently and been able to get a far more attractive purchase um, just by spending a little bit of time to shop around and look for the best uh, deals. So that, that video is going to come out soon. I think another thing when uh, silver is falling like this, you have to remember that um, there could be some dealers that recently bought a bunch that want to get out of it. You know, it's psychologically pretty annoying to buy a bunch of silver uh, and then want to just sell it retail. Now silver is down. So if you can minimize somebody's losses or just get them back some capital, it can actually be a pretty good buying opportunity. On the other hand, you have to watch out for dealers that uh, are so sort of paralyzed or, or you know, focused on their fear that they wanted high premiums 
uh, when it was high. When it drops, they say, well, premiums are higher. I'm just going to charge the same um, price. I know a lot of people have had some issues with that. And I think, you know, that's something that's very frustrating. Um, but there's plenty of dealers that probably will not be in that position. Um, you also, when silver prices are dropping, um, there are some people, you know, I think you always want to be, as a general rule, cautious about how you're buying silver uh, on the internet. But I'd be curious to hear if there's any stories. You know, I know that there's a lot of scams that go on with silver. So um, all of a sudden, you know, it, it feels like silver drops. You know, maybe people are worried because they're losing money on their silver or, or they're just more um, likely to run sort of a scam or sham operation. So you have to watch out for that. Um, but I would just say uh, the biggest thing is having that long term mentality when the silver price drops. Um, it's another great opportunity to look around at the different bullion dealers and compare their premiums. Who's charging um, more? Who's charging less? Uh, because there's different like companies are going to play things differently. I generally recommend if you have any, you know, nearby a uh, dealer or shop that those are going to be the best places to purchase as opposed to the big online retailers, but there are, you know, there's plenty of good ones um and ones that I've worked with that, you know, you you do get more of a guarantee, really good customer service and a wide selection of products. Um I think when silver prices drop, there's probably also uh, a bit of an effect uh, that cheapens some of the more specialty or odd types of bullion. Like, you know, most of the stuff here is 2.1 troy ounces. I mean, people don't really, that's not even something that like an Atmex is going to carry. Uh, you know, maybe something like that they might. But um, for a lot of these pores and these uh, sort of odd items, um, hopefully, and what I've had the experience having is that premiums will sort of adjust downwards. But those are a lot of my main takeaways about what to do and why um, things have been going on. I think maybe I'll make also a video about a lot of the things that impact the price of silver um, and just sort of discuss like what things you should be thinking through if you think are going to happen um, that you might be able to then make a play on because you know, say your view is that interest rates are going to go way lower. It's important to understand, okay, well, that's going to be really good for the price of gold and silver and other non-yielding assets. Or maybe you think that, you know, there's going to be a fair amount of hyperinflation. Obviously, that's pretty good for any of the sound money. I also think there's some interesting comparisons to Bitcoin. But I generally think, you know, if you do have something that's gone down a fair amount in value and now you need to sell because you think other things are better opportunities not to do that in a really short term say you know price languishes you really feel like it's you know and it will will come back up but so will a lot of um, other investments that you could have then funneled that money into so it's not like you know it, it's not necessarily always the best idea like with with my especially on the coin side sometimes i buy stuff the price goes down i don't hold it just so that the price can go back up it's always what's the price of it that day and in that moment can i get a fair deal or price to buy it or am i going to be so panicked that i need to sell and take the first or second offer from the local um, bullion buyers that are paying way below uh, what you could get with a little bit of time and effort. So that concludes today's video. Look out for more silver and gold content. Um, I'm probably going to do some videos about why I like silver better than gold and maybe do an inverse gold better than silver um, just to think some of those things through. But going to keep on making the bullion content um, because I obviously have a fair amount of it. Uh, the gold and silver goes into a locked uh, box in a like bank. So I don't always have it on me, but I'm going to do a bunch of videos and then release them uh, probably over the summer to talk about them uh, and then do some update videos on the way. Thanks for watching the video and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to visit our website, treasuretown.com, to stay up to date on everything going on on the channel and possibly get some great deals on coins and collectibles. We look forward to seeing you on our future videos and best wishes until then.